Track seven is uh, dropping the needle. I think we put it there to pick the album back up pace-wise after Dark Days. Um, also, if you think of it from a vinyl point of view, it's the first track on the, the second side, so it kicks it off you know, the same way that the album kicks off really with the uh, ring leader. And when I first heard the music to that, I really <laughs> got me pumped up and I had a lot of fun uh, writing the lyrics to that song. Um, it's basically about a love for music, um, an addiction for music, I suppose, you know, from a personal point of view and um, try to tie in like music with addiction in the lyrics and I just had a lot of fun writing them and um, really looking forward to getting a copy of our album on vinyl actually to yeah. see the artwork in glorious <coughs> 12 inch and uh, to hear it on the vinyl as well. So you've got a shepherd's play and be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's like a short song and sometimes you need to know when to go, yeah, it's kind of finished. Yeah. Instead of like, we could have made it three or four minutes. You can overwrite the song. Yeah, you don't want to bore them to tears, like, no way. No, only bore them for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very good. Step into the fire. I believe uh, I was the basis of the riffing for that and let everyone put their 50 cents worth in and uh, came up with a, a belter of a song, I think. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty big, big tones on that. Be a part of man. And, uh, I think it's a quite gr pretty. grungy riff, so people mm. wouldn't associate you with writing it, if you know right. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, I think Dane's changing the drumming as well. It's going from full on. And then I think yeah. it changes pace, which yeah. is really cool on that. You know, and uh, Neil again came up with, you know, great hooks, great lyrics. It's the first one I wrote actually for the album lyrically yeah, and, and melody wise. It's one of those, the chorus, just the words that came you up. Sent me, you I sent me a memo, didn't you? And I said, we've got to call it Step in yeah. the Fire. Sometimes when you're writing a melody, I, I always write melodies first before lyrics, so sometimes I'll just sing random words, and that one was just. The words step into the fire just came out of my mouth when I sang the melody for the first time. Track nine is Get On Your Knees. It was, I think it might be the first I think it was music the first. I heard from, yeah. from you guys. Um, yeah, it's the first one we were all jamming together in the yeah. room, I think. The boys all demoed it in Todd's studio and I had an email come through unexpectedly. I obviously didn't get a call about practice happening. <laughs> and um, hit play on it and immediately want to smash my room up. <laughs> right. It made me feel... On it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it reminded great. me of when I first heard um, Killing in a Name Off by Rage Against the Machine. Not the riff, it doesn't sound like that, but the riff reminds me of Rage Against the Machine. The energy is like... And, yeah. Whenever you that kind of music, you want to smash things up, and I kind of got that one of this riff in a good way. I think that was one of the first solos we recorded. I love, that's one of my favourite solos that Phil plays on the album, I think. There's all like crazy bends and effects going yeah. off and stuff. I think that was a, that was a cool... It, it almost reminds me of like... There's lots of energy in that song. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of like the Big Mouth kind of vibe off the EP. It's kind of like a bit of a jump up. Yeah, I think they're similar, they're similar styles. Yeah. Sort of their own kind you of won't fall asleep in it, that's for sure. Yeah. I've read somewhere that uh, somebody hoped it wasn't, you know, that I'm not misogynist in any way. Um, it's not about that, actually. Although I can understand why somebody would think it is. Saying get on your knees. But um, yeah, it, for me it's just about, I wrote a song about somebody I hate. So. <laughs> People think they're better if, than you. Yeah, if think. somebody, mm -hmm. if you hate somebody, yeah, they think they're better than you, then you might relate to the song. <music> Track number ten is High Rule, and again, that's a song that had a title that was the, the working title was stuck. Um, I think originally the boys. We were playing Zelda on Nintendo at the time, and we kind of, oh, let's call it Hyrule. Uh, well, I, I didn't realise that. No. And for me, it made sense for my lyrics because 
it's about like being the little people in the world who are affected by all the big decisions made by some idiots who uh, are ruling different countries. So it made sense from my point of view, um, which is why I was keen to keep the title. But I didn't realize it was about Zelda. There you go. Which I should have known, because I love games. Yeah. Tyler wrote the chorus, didn't we? Really? Yeah, it was Amsterdam, song check in, and then Dane put a beat to it. I remember it took us a while to come up with a chorus, didn't it? Or a verse. You wrote the chorus. I wrote the chorus. Dane wrote the, Dane wrote the verse. Yeah. But we were struggling for a while on the verse. <laughs> so Dane gets a, a guitar credit on a, on that song. So I think that's one of your favourites, though, isn't it? That's that track. Huh? That's one of your favourite tracks, you told me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I like how simple the vocal melody is over the chorus. Simple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really catchy when he sang that first in the studio. I was like, oh, that's really good. Well, when I heard the riff, it was like, the first thing I thought was the riff's so good, it doesn't need me complicate, over complicating. Yeah. You know, we need, the riff needs the space to breathe on its own. So I felt that, yeah, to keep it a bit more stripped back on the vocal and then to the point, really. Yeah. I like how the album titles in that song, yeah. even though it's not called that. Yeah, uh, that's true. It's like a cool little, I always like that when it's not a, a title, a title of a track, but then it's, it's in there. Yeah, if, you, if you, I've been blasting it in, uh, in a car with 13 speakers <laughs> the last month, and it's really, really trippy to play loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally, the breakdown melody was my chorus. It's a piece, yeah. of, it's a piece of work I've tracked, yeah. And then I just felt I was singing too much for that to be the chorus, if that made sense. It's, it was like loads of vocals, busy gu guitar riff for the chorus, and it just felt it didn't work as well. But then when the whole thing strips down into the, into the middle part of the song, and it's just the feedback and stuff, then... Track 11, Into the Dark. So yeah, there's another song where we, we didn't know if we would make the album, but we wanted to write, not, not like a standard battle, but like a slower, sort of chilled out song. I think it was Todd's main, main tune, riff. Well, I, sp I sp spliced it into a riff. Me and Phil wrote some riffs for John Garcia from, he was playing Caius and Dings a few years ago, and like the riff was like left over from that session, so I kind of used that and then sort of played it back to everyone. I think you didn't even remember you'd written it. I think you'd forgotten. No, forgot. <laughs> but it's cool to keep the, I got this, you know, when you've got them all recorded in your studio or whatever, you can just go, you know, even I forgot about the riff. But it just, it was, yeah, it just came together like that. And it was like you're playing leads and things all on the verse and there's like Hammond organs and, and different, different things. I think it, it, it's like a breath of fresh air at the end of breeds. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's still in, Classic rock vein, but it just shows a bit more versatility. The vocal, the vocal tone changes as well. I think um, that some of the gigs with Hulk Wind have like helped us think maybe we can stretch yeah. out a bit, bit of psychedelic it's kind good, of. It's a good way to keep your sanity at the end of the album because you could probably lose with it. the previous yeah. track, High Rule, you're gonna the brain's gonna be fried by then. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, so it, it sort of. You come with a warning on the front. <laughs> so it's like an Alka Seltzer after the morning after. <laughs> <laughs> 